What's up everybody, Ted Forbes here. I am back, can you believe it? I haven't done a video in like two weeks. It feels like forever and I've really been itching to get back into it and uh, I wanna talk about some of the things I've been working on. Some of you guys have emailed and tweeted me and asked if I was okay. I am fine, trust me. Um, so anyway, I wanna talk about some of the things that have been going on with the show and some really exciting stuff too. So basically, this summer has been really interesting for the show. I hit 200,000 subscribers and I guess it was in late June, I did a video called Nobody Cares About Your Photography. And I know that's a very controversial title, it was intended to be, and it was a controversial video and some people loved it, some people hated it, uh, but either way it got shared a lot and I had a lot of views off of that. And so one of the things I wanted to do was kind of ride that wave. And one of the things I've always wanted to do with this show is to be producing daily content. Um, it's something that's very difficult to do because there's a lot of prep and a lot of research that go into a lot of the topics that I cover, but it's something I've wanted to do. And so after that video kind of took off, I just said, well, you know what, screw it, let's just do it. And I just went daily. And so there was about a two week period there where I did a video every day. And one of the things I learned from doing that is with no strategy in place of how you're actually going to achieve it, it's not very sustainable. And it leads to a lot of stress and you get a little burnout and it's like really cool for a couple days, then you're realizing I've got to do a video today, I've got to do a video today. And so I didn't really have a plan going into that. So one of the things I wanted to do was to kind of pull back a little bit and think about my production and how I do the show. And that's definitely a goal I'm going to work into, but I need to pull back a little bit to make that happen. Um, the other thing that becomes very stressful when you do that is sometimes it can take all day to make a video. And when you're spending all day, every day making videos, things that are bigger projects get pushed onto the back burner and they become very stressful. And so one project in particular is the Artist Series. And so I decided to kind of stop and get caught back up with that. So Artist Series is the series that I'm working on this year that I did crowdfunding for last year. I've released the first three videos. I'm very proud of those. And I've got six more that are filmed and they're ready to be edited. And so they have a lot more work to, to go on them. And one of them has to be translated, it's in Spanish. And so I've got some more work to do on those, but also that was a crowdfunded project and I needed to get to some of the rewards that people, um, you know, if you donate at a certain level, there's something you get in return. And so uh, one of the things I needed to do was get my postcards made. I needed to get some of my inkjet prints done. I needed to get on some of my portfolio reviews that people people had, uh, had requested. And uh, then finally, um, the last thing I'm going to be working on is the photograms, and ma mainly because I need to set my darkroom back up to do that. But I'm going to incorporate those into the show, and I'm going to do some videos on those because they're going to be a lot of fun. I've talked about photograms before, but it's been like a couple of years, and so I'm going to do it a little bit differently this time and see if I can kind of approach it from another angle and dive a little deeper into it. I'll share with you, though, a couple things. The postcards that I had made, I had, I had these done at a company called Moo.com, you're probably familiar with. Um, a lot of people get their business cards done there and a lot of photographers use them and Moo is wonderful. It's a print on demand service. You put your files in online and then they send you your stuff in the mail. It's just slower than an email and it is, but uh, their quality is excellent. And what's cool about print on demand, back in the old days um, with printing, if you have to set up a press like a Heidelberg or something like that, you had to make plates and you had to get it so you put a big sheet of paper in and then later that gets cut. Print on demand works very differently. And so it opens up a lot of creative possibilities. Some people who do business cards want to have a different image on every card, and you can do that, which is really cool. Uh, but I just used their service for doing postcards, and I chose to do, this is the, for people who donated at $25 and up, I'll get one of these. And so I put an image on one side, it says thank you on it, and this is an image that I did last year on the rooftop of the building that I lived in with the skyline in the background. And then on the other side, I have a little note that I wrote on here, and I left enough room so I could personalize each one of these and then get them labeled and sent out. And and so there are about 300 of these, so they're a lot, but it's been a lot of fun to do. Actually, the hardest part of this was doing a mail merge because I don't normally do those things. And the way that, you know, when you do crowdfunding, they give you a big spreadsheet when you're done. It has everybody's address on it, but it didn't ask for like fields like street address, city, state, country. Um, it just had one field. And so everybody kind of formatted their address a little bit differently. And so that was pretty much the biggest nightmare. I ended up using InDesign uh, and that way I could match my font up and stuff. And I used the little clear stickers and I just stick those on. So anyway, I've been working on that this week. These will be ready to go out. Uh, the inkjet prints I will share with you guys in a separate show, but I'm really excited about that too. I chose an image that I did in Mexico City this year. And so uh, that's been a lot of fun. So I needed to give that a little bit of attention because when those things are on your plate and you're just like, don't have time to get to them, it becomes 
very stressful. So anyway, a couple other things that'll be coming up in the next month here um, that you guys might be excited about. I've got a couple new cameras to review, um, one of which is uh, B&H sent these to me for, uh, for loaners, but uh, this is the Panasonic Lumix GX8, which I've actually been very impressed with so far, and I'll be talking about that and doing a full review. And the other one is the camera I'm actually filming on right now, so you can't see it, uh, but this video is actually being filmed in 4K which I'm excited about. And this is on a Sony. This is the Sony RX10 Mark III, which is what Sony call a bridge camera. So the idea is a camera that you can carry one camera and go back and forth between doing stills, and it's got advanced video options in it as well. The interesting thing about this camera is this lens that's on it is a, is a zoom lens, and the focal range is 24 on the wide end all the way up to 600. It is a really long zoom, and it, it, the image quality is really excellent on here, and I'm really excited about doing a review on that. Um, so anyway, so those are two things that are coming up. And the other thing that I want to talk about that I know some people get really excited about is photo history stuff. So, and I call these photo lit episodes. And the way that I've done these, and I've done this show a long time, and so I've kind of done them a certain way, and I want to change that up to hopefully make it a little more interesting and to be able to cover things a little bit differently. So the way I've done it in the past is I've picked, you know, just a photographer, so let's say Ansel Adams or Paul Strand or whoever, and I just kind of do a retrospective of, of them. And I think just in the grand scheme of the show, I think that was important to do at the time. But what I want to do now is start looking at it more like geographically, you know, by era, um, that kind of thing. And one of the things I want to talk about uh, coming up, and I'm going to do multiple videos to spread this out. It won't be crammed into one. But I want to talk about New York mid-century, so like the 1930s up to maybe the 1960s, because I think New York represents, as particularly for American photography, a really interesting time period where a lot of really important things happened and a lot of really wonderful photographers came out of that. Really, the whole style that we know as street photography evolved during that time. Photojournalism was evolving during that time. Photographers like W. Eugene Smith, uh, Paul Strand was one of the big ones, uh, Minor White. Uh, anyway, it's endless. There is a book that I'm going to talk about, and one of the aspects of this, this is a, a book called The Radical Camera, and I'll do a whole show on this. Um, and this is quite good. Um, this came out, and this is a book on New York's Photo League. And the Photo League is a, it started out as a camera club. It, it lived for about a 15 year span, and it was a way for photographers in New York, this is way pre-internet, 1930s, uh, to get together to learn from one another, critique each other's work, and it evolved into actually a school, and you could take lessons at the Photo League, and there were about 1,500 students that came, went through the doors. Um, the first, uh, experience that I had in learning about the Photo League was a year and a half ago when I did my interview with Harold Feinstein before he passed away. And he was a Photo League member and he was talking about how it worked. And, and it was really interesting because as progressive as it was um, and very good for photography, it was also very progressive politically. Um, my episode I did on Paul Strand a long time ago, I talked about that. Um, the whole idea of using photography to promote social change. And I think this is really important, um, but it also, at that time, had a heavy political leaning to it, and a lot of the photographers that were members of the Photo League were very leftist in their political views. And so, you know, Paul Strand was shadowed by the government at one point. Um, Sid Grossman, who was one of the other big leaders in the Photo League, was actually blacklisted uh, by the government. Um, and this is, you have to remember, this is the 1950s, so at that time, um, communism was a real dirty word. And so the whole idea with McCarthyism in that era and the whole Red Scare, and literally the Photo League got shut down and pushed under the rug because people were afraid of that kind of mentality. And, and what's funny is like looking at it now in the 21st century, it seems a little preposterous. And But I think more curious than that is the fact that this is a major movement and a big chunk of history that is undercovered. Is that a, it's not undercover. It, it's, it's not covered like it should be. And so I want to talk some about the Photo League coming up and some other things that were happening in New York at the same time. And there's a lot of really interesting things. And I think that was a really fruitful, creative time in New York. So anyway, so there is a lot coming up. Those are some things I'm going to get to in the next month here. And then there's still a lot of projects that are coming up. Uh, photo assignments I have not forgotten. Uh, Contra.st, I finally got an idea for getting that running. Anyway, it's just taking a long time to get all this together, and uh, so I wanted to kind of touch base with you guys today and at least talk about that. I'm going to be getting back into my regular video schedule, and eventually, 
the idea is that we can do daily content here. It's just that it needs a little bit of strategy to get to um, and some of these other projects to be wound up as well. So anyway, if you guys enjoyed this video, please remember to like it, share it, subscribe to The Art of Photography, and I will see you guys in the next video. Until then, later.